Hi, I'm Michael Olayaga, politics editor for LatinPost.com. This is Turnout, the series featuring Latino politicians, government leaders, and advocacy groups discussing what's most important with the Latino voting bloc. Regarded as one of America's great labor and civil rights icons, Dolores Huerta has dedicated her life to advocating labor and civil rights. And her work continues as the Latino electorate braved the 2016 presidential election season. Where we talk about the Latino vote, the 2016 presidential candidates, and combating organizations aimed to confuse the Latino community. What made you still be engaged in politics? Well, we know that a lot of the issues that we have in our country that need to be fixed, uh, they need to have a political solution. And the only way that we can arrive at that political solution is by electing representatives in the Congress, uh, in our state legislatures, and at the local levels that will actually advocate for working people mm -hmm. and for the Latino community in particular. Mm -hmm. So what do you think about the Latino electorate currently? Will they have much more of a say this time around in 2016, since immigration is now a bigger issue compared to 2012? Well, I believe that the Latino community can be the deciders. Um, we saw that happen in the 2008 election and the 2012 election, and we are so many voters at this point in time. Uh, even in many states where we have small percentages, like in the state of Virginia, is what happened when the Terry McCullough uh, gov governorship race happened. It was the Latino vote that were the deciders in that mm -hmm. election. Uh, you had um, Terry McCullough won uh, with uh, 53,000 votes and the number of Latinos that voted were 63,000. So it was the Latino vote that really uh, made that impact that he could then be elected governor. Mm -hmm. Sticky to 2016, uh, I saw reports online saying that you would prefer a woman to be in the White House in charge than a Latino Republican. So could you go back and tell us what your thought process to that? Well, it's, we need some money, somebody in the White House that is really going to fight for the issues that our people care about. Uh, the majority of the Latino population are working people, mm -hmm. and we need somebody that's going to fight for the working people, which, of course, many of the Latinos are. And so it's uh, not a question of, you know, your surname or the language that you can speak. It's a question about what values you hold. Are you going to stand up uh, for the issues that affect the Latino community? It's not just about having a, you know, a Latino last name. So th th this is why it's important. And I think that the question was uh, whether uh, Marco Rubio uh, or, would, uh, or Ted Cruz would be a good person to have in the White House. Mm -hmm. And I would say no. They might have a Latino last name, they may speak the Spanish language beautifully, but that is not what our people need. Mm -hmm. Our people need somebody that's going to stand up there for them, that's going to fight for them, for immigration reform, uh, for better health care, uh, you know, for uh, jobs, uh, for the minimum wage. This is what we need. And I, and I also want to throw in, into, the, into the mix that we also have to work against global warming and uh, to protect our environment and protect our planet. One of my uh, later questions was, are you perhaps concerned Latinos would vote based on someone's last name, then policies? Yeah, I, that does bother me a lot because, I should say worry me a lot, because we do know that uh, many of our Latino population are disengaged. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they're not listening to the news or uh, they're, they're not really, and they, they, some, some, many of them feel that, that somehow their votes don't matter. And so, you know, they're not really on top of the issue, so to speak, and they, they might get fooled. And not, not only by the fact that people might have a, a Spanish surname, but also the fact that um, there will be, uh, there's a big effort out there to confuse the Latino voters. You know, we have this organization called Libre, mm -hmm. for instance, that is being financed by the Republicans. Uh, I believe part of it by the Koch brothers, uh, who were these gentlemen who, uh, you know, get all of their money from the oil and the petroleum and the coal industry. And uh, they're going to do as much as they can to go out there and confuse the Latino voters. And so many of them uh, who are not on top of the issues and might uh, vote the wrong way, vote against their own personal interests. Well, yeah, I personally support Hillary Clinton, yes, and, and not only because she's a woman, 
uh, but also because she's a strong woman, she has the experience, uh, she's been connected with the Latino community uh, for many decades, uh, even uh, before she uh, was the Secretary of State or, you know, or before she ran for the presidency. The first time uh, she registered voters down in South Texas, and I traveled with Hillary Clinton when she was running for the presidency. In every community that we went to, she had so many friends and so many supporters in, in the Latino community. Uh, she's not, uh, as you say, Johnny come lately. She's, uh, she's had her roots in the Latino co community for many, many decades. So what were your thoughts when she made her immigration stance known a couple weeks ago? Your response to it? Well, uh, my understanding is that uh, Hillary Clinton is supporting uh, President Obama's executive order. Uh, she's always been for immigration reform. And so I, I think that she's somebody that, that has uh, built a trust uh, that one needs as a candidate with the Latino community. And so I, am, I have a lot of faith in Hillary Clinton. Uh, she's a, an ex extremely intelligent woman, and she will come through on what her promises. And then she has the experience to make it happen. Mm -hmm. Let us go to the Republicans. Your mm -hmm. thoughts on Marco Rubio? Well, Marco Rubio, it's interesting because although he was part of a group that was pushing for immigration reform, when he really had the opportunity uh, to do a better job, he kind of stepped out of the picture, and, and that's very unfortunate. And he has made statements that uh, he thinks that the DREAM Act was a mistake and that he would uh, take away the monies on the DREAM Act. And um, so, uh, you know, I think that he is, again, a, per a person that we really can't trust because I think he's an opportunist, and he's going to say what he needs to say just to get himself elected. He speaks uh, kind of uh, on the both sides of his mouth, okay? Uh, because first he said he was for immigration reform, and then he didn't support uh, Obama's executive order, which would, of course, brought a t tremendous amount of relief uh, to so many people who were here uh, that are working people to give them work permits so they could, you know, come out of the shadows. And then what he's doing is very clever, actually, and I think this is one of the lines that Libre is also using. And basically they're saying that Obama's executive order uh, actually interfered with the legislative process of immigration reform, which is very, very cynical, considering that the immigration reform bill sat in the Congress and they would even bring, bring it up to a vote, wouldn't even bring it up to a committee vote. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, like I say, they're talking out of both sides of other mouths when they say these things. Right. So the next person I want to ask is Jeb Bush. <laughs> Your thoughts on Jeb? Well, Jeb Bush, again, he has made very anti-immigrant st statements, you know. Uh, he has said that he would get rid of the of, of the DREAM Act, and he, again, he's another one that, that first he's against immigration, then he says he's for immigration, but if we look at his actual statements that he has made and maligned immigrants in the statements that he has made. You've been very involved in having Latinas be more politically involved, <laughs> engaged. Uh, tell us more about that, and what message would, would you want to tell Latinas right now who are considering and being involved in politics? Well, I would say that uh, Latinas, and by the way, all women, <laughs> need to get more involved in politics. We uh, do have a, a serious uh, gender gap when it comes to uh, political representation of women and uh, especially la Latina women. So we would encourage them to run, and we know that <coughs> often uh, women say, well, I'm not going to run for office because I don't feel like I'm totally uh, prepared at this point. And <coughs> I just like to say to them, you know, run for office anyway because you can learn on the job just the way that the guys do, okay? <laughs> <That's> <laughs> but, but at the same time, I do, I do want to say this, that it's also, also a question of leadership. And uh, so we want to al always, if possible, elect the, per the person that can um, be the best representative, whether it be a Latino or a Latina or somebody else. We want people that are strong that are leaders, that are not afraid to take risks, you know. We don't want people that are just there <coughs> because they're going to, quote, unquote, vote the right way. We want people there that really show that they've got the uh, leadership that they can go out there and lead. We, ne we need leaders uh, in our community uh, to be out there and to run for office and to get elected. But again, it's up to us, too, because we have to do the work to get them elected. We can't just expect people to run and then not do the work to get them elected. But if, if it comes again, uh, sometimes between a Latino or Latina and a person who is not a Latino, whether they, they be African American or they be Anglo, we have to try to choose the best possible person. I've also had interviews with Libre Initiative, and I spoke to Daniel Garza about, mm. well, the controversy, like, you know, the, the Koch brothers, you know, uh, funding them. And I asked him for his response to organizations that have, you know, criticized, you know, their, their mission. And he says that, you know, it's disappointing that people do that, but also that there should be a conversation um, on both sides. 
have you reached out to Liberty Initiative and, and spoken to them about, you know, any concerns, the Koch brothers? Well, we know what the Koch brothers are about. The Koch brothers are uh, trying to buy the Congress. Uh, they, they're doing a pretty good job so far uh, by spend, spending millions of dollars. And uh, they are not supporting in any single way that we can think about the Latino community. I can't think of one thing that the Koch brothers have done that have benefited the Latino community. So why anybody would even want to work for them? Why you would even want to participate in this uh, cynical approach that they're taking to confuse the Latino community about voting, I think is wrong. And uh, at this point, I would say that they are the enemy of the Latino community. And so I would say to Mr. Garza that why are you even doing this? I know that he's worked for uh, the, uh, the Bush uh, campaign before, and I think he's going back to work for Jeb Bush now. And he, this is what I've heard. But uh, uh, I would say that we really, really don't have anything in common. We might uh, have a debate about what they're doing. I think a debate would be better, w better than a conversation uh, because the conversation that they are engaging in is one of deception. Uh, to our community and maybe in a good way it may be a good way because that that way we can bring out to the Latino community who is funding uh, this whole program that they're doing uh, to try to deceive our community you know they have this great saying in Spanish que no te den gato por liebre no you know yeah. and which means uh, instead of uh, trying to get a, a rabbit you're going to get a cat so I think <laughs> It's interesting that they have chosen that libre, uh, which of course we know means freedom, mm -hmm. right? Uh, but actually, it doesn't. I think that we have to say that in in there, what they are doing is not one of uh, freedom. It's really one of more of uh, putting people in economic chains. You know, it's really one of uh, blinding people so that they really can't see what the light is. For more turnout, visit landpost.com, and don't forget to follow us online. I'm Michael Oleaga. This has been Turnout.